Welcome into TDN Against the Spread, Paige Demacos, Jake Arians, Jamie Eisner, and we have officially Thursday night football. It feels like it's been, we've gotten used to this Tuesday night, Wednesday night. We've got a whole lot of nights with football on which we will not complain about, but we have a Thursday night matchup and a pretty good one at that between the Rams and the Patriots going on tonight that we will talk about a little bit just to get into player props and then we'll get into everything else that we usually do on the show. Gentlemen? How are we feeling today? How are you guys doing today? Rainy and cold in Arizona. I'm loving it. I know. it's it's. Uh, Jamie's not in AZ anymore, but it sure feels good to get a rainy day in Arizona, which feels like uh, the greatest day that you would have back in Chicago. Uh, and I know the Chicagoans were like shaking their heads at me, but that's what, that's what happens when you live in the desert and get sunshine all year long. But this is not a weather show. At least Jamie's not taking the over, so we're not breaking down weather. So that that's the only time we ever talk about weather on the show here. We are going to talk about this matchup between the Rams and the Patriots before I let you guys talk player props. They're four-and-a-half-point favorites. That is the Rams at home against the Patriots at betonline.ag. Guys, we just saw really – I want to call it strange because it was strange. There's not really another word I can use to describe what happened to the LA Chargers and the and and the New England Patriots, right? A absolute dismantling and a goose egg for a team that was a offensive powerhouse, right? So what do you make of this game? On short rest, these two teams have faced off against each other in a big game before. I think this is a fun one on Thursday night with the Patriots just hanging on to their playoff hopes. So Jake, what do you think happens in this matchup tonight? I'm going to take the Rams 27-21. I really wanted to lock this in, but then that 45 to nothing goose egg is just <laughs> hanging right there, and you're just like, yep. ah, I don't know. Stephon Gilmore coming back. This defense looks really good. I, I don't know. I'm still going to take the Rams. They're so much better. Cam Newton had like 68 yards passing, and the game was 38 to nothing. I don't even know how that's possible in today's NFL, but it was. Um I don't think that's possible against this Rams defense. I don't think they're going to have a lot of success throwing the ball at all, and you can't really run on this Rams defense. I think the Rams' offense may struggle early. I think they have enough to get to 27 and get it done. I, I take them to cover. I feel really good about it. I was close to locking it in, but I can't. Yeah, close to locking it in, but it's hard to get that most recent memory out of your head, right? The most recent memory that you just saw with that New England and the other team that plays in L.A., Jamie, you like a player prop in this game, I'm assuming. You like you always got one. You always mm -hmm. like to you've had pretty pretty good success this year uh with the JD McKissick bet. Because that's what we're just gonna call it. All player pops just just fall into this category of JD McKissick. So who uh who you like in, in, in this game for player props? So I'm gonna go a little off the radar here. We are seeing rookies across the league make major impacts and some new rookies that are popping up. I'm going to go with a player that played a season high in snaps for the Rams last week, played almost 50% of the offensive snaps, and even played even more than Josh Reynolds, who's been seeing a lot of work for the Rams. And that's Van Jefferson, the very the extremely talented rookie that just hasn't had a lot of opportunities because there are a lot of really good pass-catching options in L.A. Only two receptions. like The over-under is at one and a half right now. Uh, he had four last week on five targets. I think he could be a key X factor in this game for the Los Angeles offense. Tend to agree with you. We've loved the rookies, Jamie, so far this year. There's been a lot of excitement uh, for all of us at the Draft Network around what the what the rookies have been able to put up thus far. So really looking forward to this game and seeing what happens. And if Jamie hits, I know I'll get a text because I always do. It'll be like midway through the second quarter, and it'll be like, hey, I already hit that bet. And I'm like, yeah, go, go, Jamie. Go, go, Jamie. Hope everybody else listens and, and gets that bet in the second quarter as well. But let's move on. Let's talk underdogs. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about here, the, un the underdog, that is the Cleveland Browns. That felt like the underdog, the perennial underdog, Jake, right? You, you, your dad and you, you spent some time there. You know this organization. This team is in a place that I feel uncomfortable talking about, right? Like, it's like I saw this, I, I saw these two teams and they were matching up against each other. And it's, they were pinning the Buffalo Bills and the, and the Cleveland Browns that are asking which team is better. And I was like, man, I did not think we would get to this place this year, but we have. And you are taking the Cleveland Browns and they are getting points in this game. Look, give me the Brownies. I love them. They haven't been to the playoffs since 2002. My dad was the offensive coordinator the last time that they went to the playoffs. So if you want to tell me that the Ravens are more desperate, 
No, they're not. They haven't been to the playoffs since 2002. They're 9-3. and three. They're playing better. They're healthier. They're hot. Nick Chubb leads the NFL in 20-yard-plus runs. You just watch the Cowboys kind of run it down their throat, and if they make three field goals, that's a really good game. This Browns offense is playing a hell of a lot better than the Cowboys right now. This Ravens defense is still banged up. Clayus Campbell's trying to play through some stuff. Jimmy Smith was out the other night. Don't know how healthy they're going to be. They have to blitz because they don't get a lot of pass rush. And by the way, the first time these teams met, you just look at the box score, it looked like a blowout. The Browns are averaging seven yards a carry in the first half until a couple turnovers and some bad breaks took them out of the game, and the second half got away from them. I expect this one to be different. It's another chance for the Brownies to step up and hit Big Brother in the mouth. This time I think they get it done. Yeah, this would be a statement victory for that Cleveland Browns organization and team this year, especially considering – where we thought the Baltimore Ravens would be at this juncture of the season. So it will be a very, very interesting matchup. Jamie, your underdog, I feel like you've picked this team specifically a couple of times this year, right? You've especially the Washington football team getting points, a team that we knew going in was going to fight because we all know who Ron Rivera is and we knew what that defense could be. But then this Alex Smith magic that has started to happen here with this Washington football team in a division that's, you know, no magic exists in this division with the exception of this Washington team. So I assume you like them just because they're getting points against in, you know, an evenly matched backup quarterback San Francisco team. I do. And look, the Washington football team is four, one and one as ours road dogs this year, which is a really interesting stat to note going into this game. And road dogs in general have been pretty successful in the NFL this year, hitting it over 57%. But the reason why I like this is defense. And I'm going to read you some numbers about this Washington defense right now. Fourth in total defense, third in passing defense, 10th in rushing defense, eighth in scoring defense. They are playing at a high level in every facet of the game on that side of the ball. I'm not sure San Francisco is going to be able to move the ball consistently. And all you just need, if when that's the case, you just need Alex Smith and company to do just enough. Now, my only concern is I don't expect Antonio Gibson to play in this game. It looks like he's been dealing with turf toe, which is going to probably be a multi-week injury. But I think Washington has a really good chance just to win this game straight up. And I'm going to take the extra three points that I'm being given right now. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I like Washington to potentially win this football game. I think it wouldn't wouldn't be a surprise, but those defensive statistics, man, we knew they were going to be good, but they've been really, really good this year. And shout out Ron Rivera, who's just coaching up this football team that nobody really had expectations for. And sure as hell did not have Alex Smith pegged as the starting quarterback when we're talking about December uh, and, and them fighting for a playoff position. Let's talk about stayaways, guys. I looked at both of your stayaways and I went, Yep, I saw both of those games, and I went, no thank you. I want none of either one of those. So this first one, this one's Jake's Cardinals at Giants. Obviously, we're still waiting on what's going to happen with Danny Dimes. Kyler Murray, though, and this Cardinals team, if uh, we've talked about it on our podcast. If they don't get that miracle, the Hail Mary, right? This is a, a team that has been on a skid for a while now. And I assume you're in the same camp here, Jake, where you're looking at this team going, ah, I don't know what this team is now right now with Kyler Murray and potentially his lingering lingering injury. I don't know what that is. I mean, they're also a penalty, a BS penalty, by the way, from not even getting into overtime with the Seahawks the first time. Mm-hmm. They're really two plays away from losing six straight. And we talk about this team completely different. By the way, that was long before this injury to Kyler's shoulder that we're talking about that keeps him from somehow running. I really think the Seahawks put the, put the, the, the Siri, like put the on the board, what you do defensively blitz this guy. You know, everybody's scared to blitz him for the run, but they're not blitzing to get there. They're blitzing to keep him in the pocket and he can't do anything with it. And as you're not going to see it three weeks in a row, the Rams did it. The Patriots did it. This giants team has the ability to do it. Now this giants team's one, four straight. And we're talking about the Cardinals that have potentially lost six straight. And they have, are on a bad tear here. I just don't know what's going to happen here. They're all, the Cardinals play bad on the East Coast. I really want to pick the Giants, but I got Danny Dimes hamstring. And do I really believe in Colt McCoy two weeks in a row after just whooping the Seahawks? The biggest thing I saw from the Giants last week was they out physical the Seahawks, which is what you have to do. And you've had to do that for the last 10 years. They hit them in the mouth and there was no answer for that. This Cardinals team plays really physical. I just don't know what I'm going to get. Cliff's taking a lot of fire for play calling and going for it on fourth downs. There's just too many questions here for me to feel really comfortable to pick either way. 
It's really interesting about, we talk about narratives on the TDN Fantasy Podcast a lot. The Arizona Cardinals have a very strange narrative around them right now. And it, boy, oh boy, has it changed. From the beginning of the year, we we're talking Kyler Murray MVP playoffs to where they are now uh, will be a very, very interesting end to the season for that football team. Jamie, yours I looked at, yours was the initial game that I looked at and said, absolutely not. I have no idea what's going to happen in this football game between the Falcons and the Chargers. And I assume you sit in the same boat as I do where after that beat down for the Chargers, like I don't even know what this football team is. I, I, I really don't. It's hard to think of two more frustrating teams to bet on, bet against, bet with, bet for whatever than the Atlanta Falcons and the LA Chargers. Like it just did. These two teams are the, the performances that you could get from them on a week to week basis are just so diametrically opposed that you never know what you're going to get. So now they play each other and now we're not going to have any idea what we're going to get. Uh, this is, you know, Julio Jones may or may not play in this game now for Atlanta. I just, I want nothing to do with this game. Uh, you know, Atlanta's defense has been better lately, but I still don't, I still think they lack some talent. So Justin Herbert should be able to have a huge bounce back game, but I don't know. There's just, there are too many question marks in these games. I'm just, these two teams are infuriating to bet around. So I'm glad they're playing each other so I can just avoid it altogether. Yeah, I am glad that they're playing each other. So we don't need to have a collective aggravation that exists for watching either one of these football teams and trying to figure out what they are going to be moving forward. All right, guys, so let's talk over unders. You guys both like overs. Okay. You both like overs in different games. Uh, wondering when I'm going to get a weather report. That's probably sometime on our Friday TDN Fantasy Podcast because, as we know, we cannot trust the weather reports now on a Thursday for a game on a Sunday. So we will give those to you on Friday. You'll get Vanna White-style Jamie giving you a weather report, so you have a lot to look forward to on the TDN Fantasy Podcast. Uh, let's talk with you first, Jake. Okay, you like the Steelers and the Bills, a prime matchup, right? One of the one of the games I'm looking forward to the most this weekend, and you like the over in this game. Do you sense a bounce back from the Steelers team that just looked eh in that game we just saw? They've looked eh for a while now. I mean, they played a really complete game against the Jaguars, which they won 27-3, to but that's the Jaguars, and it's the one outlier for the Jags where they haven't kept it close, but that's the one game we've seen the Steelers play a full game. This defense has given up like 29 to the Eagles at one point. They give up way too much. They're coming off Alex Smith. The Bills' the offense is so much better than what we saw from Washington last week, right? Mm -hmm. I think Washington's going to get to 28, maybe 30. And this Pittsburgh offense, they don't run it very much. They throw it. Well, you can throw it against the opposite side of Tredavious White. I think they can have some success against the Bills throwing it. They're going to have to run it a little bit. But Ben's going to fight you to the end. This team's going to keep fighting for the end. And if they keep winning, they're still looking at the number one seed, which they want desperately because right now they look old, even though they're very young on that offense on the outside. They look old and, at times and slow and tired. This Bills team is hot. I can't believe I'm riding with the Bills and the Browns right now. I'm believing in these <laughs> franchises turning it around. But this Bills team's trying to win the AFC East for the first time in a long time, I think since 1996, something mm -hmm. crazy like that. Uh, I just think the Bills are playing better. But I think the Bills are going to put up those points. And I think – the Steelers have to try to match that. I think it's a pretty close game, but I think they go over 47 regardless. In the year 2020, anything can happen, Jake. Anything can happen, and it looks like we're going to get the Bills and the Browns at the top. It's just there's a lot of strange things going on, but we got to – anything can happen, so I will not be surprised. Jamie, one thing I am surprised about or I would have been surprised about had you asked me about five weeks ago. If you had told me five weeks ago you were putting the Bears in any over, I would have said, absolutely not. This team cannot even score 10 points. Now, Mitchell Trubisky as a starting quarterback has changed the dynamic of this offense. They're scoring more points. They're also giving up many more points. So I assume that's why you like the over here against the Texans, who can obviously put up points themselves. Yeah, it's this is more of an indictment of the Bears defense I've seen in the last couple of weeks, uh, allowing 75 points. They look listless, like they're ready for the season to be over. And look, Chicago's offense looks a little bit better as well with Trubisky operating things. They're not great, as everybody knows that's been watching them, but it's been a little bit better. And Houston's operating at a high level offensively, and they still have all their struggles defensively. So that's a great combination here. Uh, these teams have combined to, to allow 50 points per game on average anyway. Houston scoring almost 29 points per game since they fired Bill O'Brien. So all that stuff put together, plus 
This is where there's some value late in the season on these cold games. Over the last decade or so, when as those weather sits in between that like 32 and 39 degree range, the over hits in about 70% of the time. Like that is a really high number because they, they drop these totals down a lot. Uh, and for your weather report, all of the, cause it's very close to home. Like I can literally, I could probably, if I had a really good throw, I could hit soldier field for my apartment. <laughs> so I'm paying very close attention to how the weather is going to operate this weekend. All of that precipitation stuff is going to be out of here by, by Saturday night. So it'll be cold. It'll be 33, 34 degrees, but light wind, sunny day. So it should not affect any of these offenses right now. I'm just excited to see this matchup because we have not seen these two teams play. Here are the starting quarterbacks the last time they played. Jay Cutler versus Brock Osweiler. That was oh, the matchup yeah. the last Sign time these up. two teams played. So it's up. been a minute. Give me, get me Jay Cutler back in this offense desperately. Need it so bad. Okay. Uh, anyways, Jamie, I love that you mixed in a little weather report there. And uh, I think Jake and I are going to have to conspire to get you to show up, I don't know, at the rooftop of your apartment building, like, <laughs> Looking up at the weather, trying to figure out what the over is, like uh, live from the top of wherever let, Jamie let, let lives. The hair blow in the breeze to see how much yep. Yeah, I, I really need that happening on a on a Sunday morning to figure out whether or not uh, the Chicago Bears are going to be able to put up points. But let's move on. It's time to talk locks. Our lock it in the final segment of the show. Guys, these are the ones that everybody's paying attention to. They want to know what you like the most this week. Jake, your lock. You like the Colts going on the road to play the Las Vegas Raiders. You like them minus two and a half right now at Bet Online. And I see you have the points. I love that Courtney, our producer behind the scenes, she put the points up there. That's Jake makes the picks based off of this. He has them winning by a touchdown. So I assume that's this is one you looked at and said, yep, I think I'm taking the Colts. Absolutely. When it first came out, it was minus one. And that's one of those, to Jamie, the line is wrong, right? I was like, wow, there's no way. It moved to two and a half. I'm fine. I still got him winning by a touchdown. T.Y. Hilton has become a thing the last couple of weeks. Uh, I love Michael Pittman. They, they've been using him in this little drag route. He's really come along. Jonathan Taylor's back to being a thing. Phillip Rivers has played a lot better the last month. That defense is still really, really good. They stopped the run. They stopped the pass. Josh Jacobs may or may not play. Probably not if he hasn't already been ruled out. doesn't really matter. I don't think you're going to run on this team anyway. They're going to put some pressure on Derek Carr. And by the way, they, they were a hail Carr from losing to the Jets. Like, <laughs> it's their, their defense is so bad at this point. It's banged up. I think Phillip Rivers takes big advantage of it. I think they get to 30. I'm not sure the Raiders even get to 20. I just wrote down 30 to 23 to kind of be nice here. I think this one's easy. I feel just as good about this as I did last week with the Rams and the Cardinals. All right. Jamie's got Jamie's got a little extra fun here in his lock this week. He's got he's got two games, a six point teaser. He's got the Bucks and the Vikings play a part and the Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears play a part. So, Jamie, break it down. Why do you why are you taking the six point teaser? So you already know how much I like the Houston Chicago over and just talked mm -hmm. about that. Now you get that number down to thirty nine. But the reason why I felt I needed a teaser this week was this Bucks line. It's, oh, it was six and a half right now. And I looked at it and I went, that's easy money. But then the more and more I did some more research, I went, uh, you know, the, the Vikings tend to cover his dogs and all this other stuff. But on the other side, Bruce Arians is four and two in his last six games post the bye. But cover your ears, Jake. He's two and four against the spread in those periods. So I said, you know what? How do I play the best of both worlds here? Just tease it down to a Bucks victory. So tease it down for a Bucks victory, 39 points in Houston, Chicago, uh, minus 115 if you do that on bet online and just call it, call it a day. And I think that is going to be something I really look forward to. Uh, even if the Bucs don't somehow blow out Minnesota uh, this way, you just need them to win. At this rate, uh, I've, I enjoyed the one week of time where I didn't deal with chaotic Bucks fans. It was this nice, peaceful. I was trying to figure out why this last week was so peaceful for me. And I went, Oh yeah, the Bucks are on a bye. What a what a nice peaceful time Twitter has been. So do me a favor, Buccaneers, go out and cover that six and a half. Because one, I love watching Kirk Cousins and the Vikings lose, and two, I need you guys to in just get this fan base all riled up again, please and thank you. So I know I'll just Jamie. Take the w. Yeah, you'll I, take I love the W. Teaser. Just give me the W. I'll take yeah. five and two coming out of the bye for BA. Yeah, Jake just wants Jake. Jake's not as selfish as I am. I'm selfish. Okay, so I want yeah, page all one's bucks six by and a half. twenty. Yeah, I want bucks big. Hey, I'm cool with that. I, I'd love a stress free fourth quarter. Kirk Cousins is leading the NFL in pass rating in the fourth quarter. I can't imagine that happening. So I'll just take the W any way I can get it. 
I have a, I have a good sense it's a bounce back for that defense. I, I picked him up in fantasy. I'm looking for some turnovers in this game. Looking at you, Levante and Devin White. I want to see you guys getting after it a little bit. So looking forward to that game. Final thoughts, two-minute warning for you guys. I will let Jake go first. You have the floor, and then Jamie jumps right in with their final thoughts on our Against the Spread show. Jake, go ahead. So it's the season of giving, and we're back talking about the Arians Family Foundation, arians.rivalsmedia.com. Get on, make all your picks, play against me, Jamie Page, everybody else that's on their celebrity leaderboard. Have the chance to win all kinds of awesome prizes. Uh, we're also going to have some stuff to auction off coming up soon. Page and I have talked about uh, I'll raise the money for the Arians Family Foundation. 2020 has been extremely hard for foundations to raise money. It's all about helping underprivileged kids in the foster care system. My mom has been passionate about for her entire life, and it's a hell of a lot bigger than wins and losses. Uh, and it's something that we're talking about this time of year. So any way that you can join us at ariansfamilyfoundation.com or ariansrivalsmedia.com, get on there, make your picks, make a donation, and and help save a kid's life and have some fun in the process. I mean, these picks are a lot of fun to make. And uh, Jamie have had a lot, and I have had a lot of fun doing it the last couple of weeks. The bye week was nice, but we're back. So let's uh, let's get on there, make your picks, and, and make a donation, please. Absolutely, and and I will piggyback off that with two points. The first one, uh, we are it's a season of giving at TDN as well. Uh, if you sign up for TDN Premium uh, through our partnership with the Gives platform, sign up for the annual subscription, you get all the awesome benefits, and you get ten dollars to donate to the charity of your choice, like the Arians Family Foundation or one of the, any other one that's out there. So, if you have the ability, you have the time to give back this holiday season, please do. And there are some fun little benefits between uh, the the game that we're playing on Arians and Rival Media uh, and the. TDN and premium subscription. But the last thing I want to end with on a football note is the changing of the guard that could be happening in that Monday night game between the Ravens and the Browns. Baltimore is 21 and four against Cleveland since 2008, 21 and four. They own them, but I'm with Jake. I think the Browns win and cover in that game as well. This is going to be a tremendous game for everybody. It's essentially an elimination game for Baltimore. I believe they have a nearly 50% swing in playoff probability, depending on whether they win or lose. So I cannot wait for that matchup. 21 and four is an absolutely outrageous statistic. Like there's big brother. And then there's that. That's just <laughs> like, I just to come in and noogie you, right? Like I'm just, it's just a, over and over and over again. So what a, a fantastic opportunity for this team to take at least, they're not going to get a full punch in, but maybe a half a jab, right? Like it leads just, just a little bit. brother went and got a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's got a thing. secret weapon this time. That's exactly right. Nick Chubb, run the, run the football, please, and thank you for my fantasy football team. I will end with this. Uh, since the guys talked about all the different charitable things that we're doing across the Arians Family Foundation and uh, obviously with the Gives program, I'm doing another giveaway. Another giveaway. It's not going to be tickets this time. It's something else. I'm just teasing it. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. So this is the tease in the business. I want to get everybody excited. It's going to be something that's really fun. If you're a Buccaneers fan, I can assure you, you're going to want to participate in the raffle. So it's going to be just like it, it was last time. You're going to have donate $1. $1 equals one raffle ticket. So if you donate $100, you're going to get 100 raffle tickets. And we're going to put you into the raffle system. And one of you is going to win instant prize. So very excited about this. We'll be announced on Instagram, all to raise money for the Arians Family Foundation. As Jake mentioned, with charities this year it's been very hard because traditionally you're able to have many events where you can raise money and that's been taken away for the last year and probably for at least the foreseeable future for a short while so this is a great way to to raise money and at the end of the day i'm gonna love giving this away this is a fun thing that everybody's gonna that everybody's gonna want i can assure you of that so be on the lookout for that gentlemen Please tell our lovely audience how they can follow you on social media and see everything that you are up to. Jake, you first. Jake B. Arians on Twitter and Arians NFL on Instagram. And Jamie? Follow me at Jamie Eisner on Twitter and keep an eye out for my player props column. It'll drop either Friday or Saturday, depending on when they're available. Uh, we're up double digit units this year. Uh, so it's Killing definitely it. one you want to check out. The JD McKissick player prop special. Everybody wants a piece of the action. Jump on in. You guys can follow me at the underscore sports page with an eye on both Twitter and Instagram. You can follow our podcast at TDN Fantasy. And please be sure to check out everything we are doing at thedraftnetwork.com.